Welcome back to the Days of Thunder, written by Wondrous Wendy, narrated by Ranger Zath. Chapter 2, Asleep in the Driver's Seat. February 2002, Mammoth, California. After driving all night through winding mountain roads across the Sierras, the sight of the Dizzy Deer Diner and Motel comes as a welcome relief for Zachariah Trench. Cute name, don't you think? Trunch shrugs and glances to his right, to where Darling sits in the passenger seat. With a hand on the steering wheel, he gestures toward the motel. It's as good of a place as any other we've stopped at. The lack of parking doesn't bode well. But even if they have to spend the night in the car, at least they can have a meal and some fresh coffee. They've been driving for hours to reach the ski lodges of Mammoth, where a potential altered item is causing... issues, to say the least. There have been blocked roads and backups as a result of the recent snowstorm. Further, it's as if all of California has decided to vacation this one particular weekend in late February to these particular mountain resorts. Trench pulls into the last spot, and then the two men slip out of the old beat-up car they rented. Something on the forest line draws Trench's attention, fluttering through the trees. He stares hard into the shadows, and reaches out with his para-utilitarian abilities to draw out whatever it is that's watching them. Bigfoot, after all, is still on the loose. A small snow-white rabbit hops out from the tree line, raising its head as if to acknowledge Trench and his otherworldly powers. Darling calls his name and draws his attention away from the manifestation of his paranoia. Trench swivels toward the entrance of the motel. He finds his fellow agent standing beside a gaudy wood-carved deer, holding a bubbly mug of beer with one hoof and a whole pie in the other. He can't tell what's more ridiculous. The statue or Darling, who has put his arm around the deer with a goofy smile as if he's posing for a photograph. Guess you didn't bring your Polaroid, huh? Trench lets out a sigh and then walks past Darling without so much as acknowledging the stunt. Let's go see if they have any rooms left. Darling pats the deer's head and then follows Trench into the motel. A single worker sits at the lobby counter. A young woman with bright red curled hair, matching lipstick, and big glasses. She flips through a fashion magazine, but lifts her head when a bell over the front door rings. Well, howdy. Welcome to the Dizzy Deer. How can I help you, boys? Trench leans against the counter and lets Darling speak. The scientist has a better way with words, and the woman's bubbly and cheerful. Well, we're heading up to the lodges for the weekend. Oh gosh, everyone is. Storm has brought several feet of fresh powder. It's delightful. It really is. Do you happen to have any other rooms available for the night? Well, as you saw, the lot's pretty full. The woman swivels in her chair and turns to look at a set of empty hooks where room keys would normally be in the lobby. She turns back towards Darling with a pout. Unfortunately, I don't think we have any other rooms for the night. That's our fault. I told Bobby he needed to turn off the vacancy sign out front. Well, that's a shame. Darling tilts his head, glancing sidelong to Trench beside him, catching his attention. My friend and I will just have to stop by the diner then and find a rest stop to crash for the night. The apple pie is to die for, trust me. She hums to herself. If anything changes, I'll head over and let you both know. She smiles sweetly, batting her lashes. Can I get your name, sir? Casper Darling. <laughs> what a fitting name. She giggles, jotting down his name on a scrap piece of paper. Well, I'm Ruby. Trench rolls his eyes and pushes off the counter to head back outside. Behind him, Darling continues to chat and flirt with Ruby. Outside, the sun has fallen past the horizon, bathing the sky and lingering clouds in shades of red, orange, and purple. Trench raises a hand to his forehead rubbing one of his typical pressure points to relieve a throbbing headache. 
He hasn't had a smoke since they left the airport four hours ago. The altered item at the ski lodge further up the mountain occupies his thoughts. But word on the ground from FPC contacts states that no one has died or been severely injured. Likely, he's just hungry after a long drive. He's not the young man who could work for hours without pause. A sound to Trench's right draws his mind away from his blooming headache. Outside the diner, a young man and woman talk in hushed tones. From their smiles and half-lidded eyes, he suspects they're a couple, perhaps on their honeymoon. The man leans down and kisses her, brief and innocent, but the woman has plans of her own. She takes him by the hand and pulls him along to the motel, where they rush past Trench to head inside. Now he really needs a smoke. This is Ath, signing off until the next chapter. I'll see you back here next time with The Days of Thunder, a control fanfic by Wondrous Wendy.